I want to uh, jump right into it and uh, go into the inter innovation part. And uh, Google, as you know, is a quite young company. We, we had our 10th birthday last year in October. And as you can also see, it hasn't changed much. So what, what about the innovation part here? Um, one of the things that's usually um, a, a absolutely no-no for, for every brand is to mess around with your logo. We, we quite happily do that and have those, so we call that doodles for Googles, uh, which, which celebrate certain birthdays, anniversaries, etc. When so this one is one that we featured here in Australia on September the 2nd last year, which was celebrating the, the birthday of Richard Smith, who in, is the inventor of the stump jump plow, a very Australian uh, innovation. And Google, with our engineering and geeky uh, focus, we, we absolutely love this kind of stuff. Um, maybe uh, another thought about from a marketing innovation perspective. So where does a colorful logo come from? Any, any ideas, any thoughts? So maybe we have a look at our first data center when it was back in the early days at, at Stanford University. And so, so the racks of those self-built servers were basically kept together by those Legos. And they later ins gave the inspiration to, uh, to, to, to the logo and everything else, all our branding. So the innovation part uh, in, in on online internet, where it comes from, and there's basically three major drivers that we see in the industry. And the first one is that broadband or any, t any type of fast internet access becomes universal and really accessible everywhere. And so that, that means a lot for how people process innovation and how well you also can connect with them. The other important part is, is the falling cost of storage. And so as you all have probably heard of Moore's Law, how every 15 to 18 months the, the processor speed for computers uh, doubled and, and the cost more or less half. Uh, which gives you uh, totally new new possibilities to do, and and basically an outcome of that that is, is the production capabilities uh, are really also becoming universal and accessible for everybody. So you don't need to have a contract with a studio to to record a, a record, for instance, or any music, and so that has a lot of implications, and um, and that drives innovation in the online space and also in a lot of uh, adjacent industries like media. The way we manage it, and as you know, we have a, a lot of products uh, besides search, which I will we, 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 uh, talk about later, uh, is that we have, basically we don't really have a very structured approach. We do a lot of t stuff at the same time, our engineers. And uh, what we really, the way we look at, at innovation is, or in our project, is that we see them as a portfolio. And we want to make sure that 70% of our projects are pretty much in the core business, which means um, related to search, ads, and applications, which is our three pillars of, of our core business. But then 20% should be you know, going beyond the, the main business and, and experiment with new features, uh, you know, such as Gmail, our, our email product, and some other stuff. And, and then 10%, at least, but probably not much more, should be completely, let's say, crazy, exploratory stuff, stuff that hasn't, hasn't been done uh, before, and, and that's probably not going to pay off in the next five years or so. And, and one of the principles we're also using internally is what we call the 20% time, that we encourage our, our engineers, but not only our engineers, to dedicate basically one day per week to work on, on any project uh, that they're interested in, which can but doesn't really have to be related to their, their core job. And what we currently did here at Google Australia, where we also have a pretty big engineering presence recently, is that we had a 20% a project fair where basically engineers and also sales and marketing people would pitch each other as a project to, to get uh, teams together to, to, to speed this kind of stuff kind of up. We have a, a set of rules that we talk about. Uh, we have basically those nine notions of innovation. And I don't want to go through all of them, but I want to highlight two which I think are really, really important. And the first one is, uh, it's innovation doesn't equal instant perfection. And that's probably also one of the, you know, it's a difference whether uh, you, you, you create a free internet service over, you know, making a car or a financial service or creating anything that's probably, you know, 
should be more perf perfect. So we put a lot of our stuff out in beta and then are waiting uh, for the feedback of, of the users, what they like, uh, what they dislike, uh, what to change. And not only the feedback that they solicit in you know, mailing back or leaving comments, but basically mostly by, by measuring what they do. So, so user feedback is mostly measured by the clicks. What do they use? What do they don't use? We do a lot of A-B testing or regional testing or 5% testing uh, where you just push out uh, some features to only a fraction of our users and then see how that impacts their behavior. And if that's good, then, then we do more of that. And if not, then we change it. What we also learned, I think that's somewhere more in the bottom, is we don't kill projects typically, we morph them. So if something doesn't work, it's actually great. And uh, from what I understand is it also applies to, to a lot of uh, you know, online marketing matrix. So some companies who do a lot of email marketing, their most important matrix should actually be the unsubscribe list because if you, somebody unsubscribes after gotten your email for a while, you, you did something wrong and you should better learn from that. And, and from a website, it's probably the bounce rate, which is a really good, well measurable and very important metric. And so the second one I want to highlight here is that ideas really can come from everywhere. And that's why we have this 20% uh, stuff and, and, and a lot of uh, you know, innovation comes from clients, from users, from partners. And it's very important to be open and, and have, a, have a process to get that back into your, your, your company. So the results is, as you probably, most of you know, I guess everybody's using search and at least one or two different products. Maps, for instance, which was uh, actually originally created also in Australia. It's an Australian invention, which we are very proud of as an office here. But so most of our products originally were about uh, searching and finding information wherever it is in the internet. And, and we found, so there's a lot of more information than just on websites. So for instance, in Gmail, in pictures, in videos, in books. So we're scanning books at a, at a significant scale and making the content available. But then other, other areas are not only about finding information, but also about creating and posting information. So we have a lot of tools there. And more importantly, for sharing information, because that's really what we find out what makes uh, info much more useful. And that's where all those collaborative and social media features come up, like, like Twitter and, and many others. Um, so, so what's our favorite part of innovation? And, and a couple of examples I want to go to. And that's probably quite, quite maybe surprising for some of you guys. So where we think we can actually still add the most to have the most exciting innovations are actually around search. It's, uh, we, we see search still as a very, very young uh, industry, a, a very young product, and, and there's a lot of value we can still add to make search results better, about making it more personalized, uh, making it really more useful. And as easy as, as it looks on the surface, making it this easy is actually an extremely complicated process. And we have about, I think, more than 12,000 uh, computer scientists uh, around the world uh, who basically work on, on algorithms to, to make them better. It's a very complex uh, process. Uh, one, of, one of the features we launched in the mid last year is what we call uh, universal search. So basically, like in this example, uh, a, a search for Steve Jobs, the CEO of Apple, doesn't only give you web results, but it also gives you a list of uh, video results. It's uh, Steve's famous Stanford commencement speech. Uh, it gives you news results. It could give you uh, finan financial results, news archives, images, etc., etc., etc. And that was actually a major, and, and actually also much debated process internally because originally, as you might remember, there was a video search, there was a news search, you know, and we still have that. But then we basically merged it all in one, so you, have, you see from the different categories uh, results on the same page. The question is. Does it always make sense to show pictures on, on, for instance, a commercial query for somebody searching for a cheap airfare or something like that? Absolutely not. Uh, but that's really how we also use algorithms to see when does it make sense.